Nixon in China began a whole new genre of opera that dealt with contemporary events. said to John, you should write an opera and it should be called Nixon in China. He, of course, thought I was crazy. And then two years later called back and said, okay, let's do it. Well, my first response was, was not entirely enthusiastic because I could only imagine a, a comedy, you know, a sort of heavy-handed satire because by, by the early 1980s, Nixon was a you know, thoroughly disgraced figure and, and he was the butt of a lot of uh, bad nightclub routines and late night television and it, it took me a long time to see my way through to a treatment of that story that was uh, complex and ambivalent and multi-layered. Nixon in China was the first collaboration of one of the most important teams in modern opera. John Adams, Peter Sellers and librettist Alice Goodman, now a Church of England curate. John and I agreed that the only way to make this work artistically was straight as grand opera. Nixon was only interesting if you took him seriously. He was obsessed with the way he appeared and with the whole idea of history and how it came out of news. Yes. Yes. Well, before Nixon in China, there was a very long history of updating old operas, you know, taking Verdi or Handel or Mozart and, you know, putting them in contemporary settings. But it was quite unusual to take a historical event, especially a, a historical event from very recent times, and to treat it as an opera, and especially to treat it as a serious opera. I mean, there's a lot of humor in the opera, but it's not a piece of pop art. When we took this strange event, you know, Richard Nixon breaking every conceivable rule of the Cold War and, and going to Peking and uh, opening this door to China, which up to that point had been, you know, an absolutely closed event to all Americans. It's about the major themes of, of my childhood. You know, when I grew up, communism was the dark, evil empire. We live in an unsettled time. We live in an unsettled time. Who, 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 who are our enemies? I'd ask myself when I started composing Nixon in China, well, what kind of music um, would, would, would be the anima of Richard Nixon? And it seemed to me that white, big band music circa 1940 would be 
the appropriate voice for Richard Nixon. Not everyone liked the new direction opera was taking. Yeah, there were a lot of people out there gunning for us, you know. They had their ammunition and all their bolts pulled and ready to shoot. You know, like, like the famous New York Times review of Nixon in China, which said, Mr. Adams has done for the arpeggio what McDonald's did for the hamburger. Uh, that, was, that was so good, I put that one outside. The team's next choice of subject could hardly have been more controversial, the Arab-Israeli conflict. Run up sound and play back. The death of Klinghoffer has recently been made into a film. The opera deals with a real-life incident, the hijacking of the Achille Lauro cruise liner by four Palestinian terrorists in 1985. The hijack reached a horrifying climax. A disabled American Jew, Leon Klinghoffer, was shot, and his body and wheelchair were thrown overboard. It was a bold choice of subject for an opera, we started talking about this, Alice Goodman and Peter and I, even before Nixon and China had been premiered, we already knew that, that we wanted to do another opera. And I think we purposely felt we wanted to do something that was as uh, kind of wrenching and serious and, and uh, um, challenging as Nixon was kind of cuddly and user-friendly. One, two. <laughs> The death of Klinghoffer was controversial because it explored not only the actions, but the motivations of the Palestinian gunmen. I mean, I talked to a lot of my Jewish friends and played them the music and showed them the libretto and nobody seemed to, you know, to think anything was particularly volatile about it. But then when it was played on the stage and uh, given Peter Sellers' theatrical uh, imagination, um, you know, it became more provocative. It's really, really important that opera has some kind of profundity and it resists endless easy simplifications and instead allows life to be just as complicated as it really is. That's opera. The thing we know least about is our own history and events that have happened in our own lifetime because inevitably they've been reduced to these propagandistic sound bites you know, that never begin to explain or show you or have an insight into the spiritual life of a 19-year-old Palestinian man who will offer his life in a suicide bombing and feel that he's dying gloriously. Now, I think that needs to be more than a one-sentence tag on a news report. 
there is a real problem in this world with people who will not allow their enemy an inner life, who can't face the horror that real human beings inflict on one another. You know, this man was murdered. He was shot. He was a handicapped person. In an act of extreme cruelty, his body and wheelchair were thrown overboard and then no one was told about it. Um, on the other hand, these, these terrorists had lives. They just weren't born, you know, evil. There were reasons why they behaved like that. And so this opera tries to, you know, plumb those depths. And there are just a lot of people who don't want to go there. <laughs>